Hi there guys, it's Joey. So firstly, apologies for the light. <laughs> it's just finding anywhere with any light is kind of uh, a bit crazy at the minute. So <coughs> this video is a request and it's a video I've been trying to get round to and I've kind of been trying to plan it and I think Mama's been like, nope, nope, no planning from the heart, nothing else will do. So I apologize in advance if, it, if we ramble a little bit, me, myself and I. <laughs> and the video request was about depression, dark goddess energy, Morrigan energy, raven and crow energy is sort of a, sort of an interlude into dark goddess energy, I think. And like the sort of idea that perhaps uh, working with the dark goddesses could cause depression or uh, that somehow uh, there's something evil about them that means that they cause depression and could I address that sort of evil underline uh, that had been suggested somewhere by someone I don't know who suggested it I have no idea uh, so for the rest of this video, you're going to hear me jangling. I've got uh, my, my charms with me. Um, there you go. Only the most special people in my life get a raven claw. And uh, one lucky lady, the Morgan said. And then that was a, the raven from a very dear friend. So I've got these on me to keep me strong throughout. And. I was trying to plan this video and I've just got the feeling that uh, it's going to have to just be one of those videos that I just talk. So apologies in advance if we get off topic. I do want to read to you at, before we begin a uh, sort of symptom or definition list from the NHS, so from a medical source in the UK uh, about clinical depression. Uh, just so we have an idea of what we're talking about because depression is not being sad. The symptoms of depression can be complex and vary widely between people. Uh, you feel hopeless and lose interest in things you used to enjoy. Uh, psychological symptoms include continuous low mood, feeling hopelessness, feeling helpless, feeling low esteem, feeling tearful, feeling guilt-ridden, feeling irritable and intolerant of others, having no motivation or interest in things, finding it difficult to make decisions, not getting any enjoyment out of life, feeling anxious or worried, although uh, anxiety is a different uh, mental condition in which you feel everything uh, and everything is, is tightly wound and so forth. Having suicidal thoughts or thoughts of harming yourself, physical symptoms include moving or speaking slowly, more slowly than usual, change in appetite or weight, usually decreased but sometimes increased, unexplained aches and pains, constipation, lack of energy, lack of interest in sexual activity, changes to menstrual cycle, disturbed sleep, social symptoms include not doing work, uh, not doing well at work, taking part in fewer social activities, avoiding contact with friends, neglecting hobbies and interests, having difficulties in your home and family life. Mild depression has some impact on daily life. Moderate, moderate depression has significant impact on daily life. Severe depression makes it impossible to get through daily life. A few people with severe depression may have psychotic symptoms, psychotic break that would be. Sometimes it can be hard to distinguish between grief and depression as they share some of the same characteristics but there are important differences Grief is an entirely natural response to a loss, while depression is an illness. People who go through grieving find their feelings of loss and sadness come and go, but they're still able to enjoy things and look forward to things. In contrast, people who are depressed have a constant feeling of sadness. They don't enjoy anything and find it hard to be positive about the future. And uh, it talks about different types of, of depression. Postnatal, bipolar depression, also known as manic depression where you swing between depressed states and, and excessively high states. Seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, known as winter depression, uh, is related to winter and the change of light uh, triggering things in the brain which uh, trigger depression. 
Okie dokie, so it is also a genetic condition. It's uh, believed to be passed down to, from, uh, I believe it's more common in, in females, but it's not obviously the sole premise of females. Um, uh, so it can affect anybody, anytime. Um, and this is what depression is. This is something that I do suffer from and uh, for a whole variety of, of uh, causes and because it is a, an illness. So uh, this is something close to my heart basically is uh, defending people who are suffering from mental conditions. Uh, there's been some really good work being done lately. There's a, a really wonderful uh, informational post about celebrities being shared and the different sort of mental disabilities that celebrities suffer from and overcome and lead successful lives, depending on your definition of successful lives of course, but they, you know, are celebrities, they have a lot of money. So however you determine successful is up to you, but they are making their way in the world. So, do dark goddesses cause depression? Nope. This, I, I think where this comes from is that dark goddesses, particularly goddesses such as the Morrigan, tend to favour human beings who have been, I am not going to cry in this video, I put makeup on to stop myself crying, okay, who have been to hell and back, who have suffered, who have hurt, who have had everything taken away from them, and step by step, inch by inch, clawing their way, bleeding, broken, bruised and hurting, have come through and continue to fight through these hardships. The Morrigan favours those who have uh, faced their battles and they continue to face their battles with honour, dignity and respect. Who fight for the honourable causes, who conduct themselves with honour and respect and continue uh, to battle on through whatever it may be and in modern times warfare is not in the in the western side of the world something that happens here for the most part and you have terrorist attacks and things but it's not uh, a fact of life like it is in some of the unfortunate Middle Eastern countries that are at war and, and civil war and all the rest of it and where troops are sent. And therefore the battles that a lot of us fight become internal or they are against injustice when they are external uh, and abuses and the, the surviving and overcoming of a variety of difficult, traumatic experiences uh, is the defining attribute of a lot of people who work with Dark Goddess energy. Uh, they, Dark Goddesses, uh, particularly the Morrigan, whom, whom I obviously have experienced, show up and embrace you for all that you have been through and all that you have yet to go through. And particularly with Mama Morrigan, she's the silent watcher, which I have discussed in the past, and she watches how you have overcome this situation, how you've handled that situation. And she's very much of the mind where she, to me she's mother energy but she's not 
stick plasters on your, your boo-boos and cuddle you and, and tell you everything, you know, you're fine. It's get up. Come on. You can. You can and you will. Up you get. Now, Mama is not uncaring or unfeeling in my personal experience. I have been, you know, she'll tell me, you're going to be okay. Come on, you're going to be okay. And I'll take care of it. <laughs> often, often, uh, often comes up. Uh, especially, especially if it's an individual or a situation which is purposely causing harm. And if, you know, if it's dishonourable as well, then uh, Mama's like, I'll take care of it. Uh, I've got you. You you cry, you scream, you punch the bed, you do whatever you need to do, and then you get up and you get you keep going. And that's how Mama Morgan tends, in my experience, to really address these sorts of issues. Sometimes she'll sit back and let you handle it, and it's kind of a bit of one of your tests to see how you do handle it, see how you are getting on, see uh, if you're keeping on fighting, if you're upholding your uh, your honour, your ethics, your moral standpoints whilst you are fighting back against whatever it may be. And depression is something which a lot of people will suffer from for life. And this is how I describe depression to, to people when they ask is depression is very much a war almost a war against yourself in, in your own mind within your emotions and some days you're gonna lose and some days you're not gonna be able to feel very much or uh, you're gonna just you know be crying and everything's gonna be bad and you're gonna have a shit day and I don't mean you know a bad day, I mean a shit day. And when you're feeling depressed, you you know, you feel like everything is pointless. That what is the point in this? What why am I even here? Why am I even alive? Why am I even doing this? Those are thoughts that you will get with depression. You'll feel like you you're worthless and the problem for a lot of people uh, who suffer with depression is at some point there has been somebody within their life that sort of enables, is ableist, to the energies of depression. They encourage the person to think of themselves as a worthless piece of shit that uh, will never accomplish anything and, uh, you know, you're not good enough and... Um, everything you do is wrong and blah 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 and everybody knows who that who, who suffers from depression and they've got one of these people in their life and I, I expect the volume of people who have the, one of these people in their lives when they suffer from depression is higher than the volume of people who do not. Everyone who has had that happen to them will know who that individual is and they will know what those those sort of messages were and they will have them in their head and they'll be fighting against them. I've talked about it before, but on the Dark Goddess healing videos and a bit since. I was really good at school. I was top five in the UK for sociology at A level. I was one of the top five candidates in the UK for sociology at A level. I have my certificate in the other room. I was supposed to go to university, I was supposed to ace everything, I was supposed to be a lawyer, I was supposed to earn a ton of money, I was supposed to be this big shot. And after the abuse happened, I fell to bits. And I died. And when I came back from it, I wasn't the same person. I'm not. Oh God, sorry if I cry. Um, and I didn't have the same values anymore. And it took me a long time to just get through 
get through it and, and not want to not be here anymore. And protecting my family of what is left became the all-consuming way of survival for a while. And as I went through that, more than one family member and indeed 99% of my friends and a couple of men that I have loved in that period completely just left because it was too difficult for them to deal with somebody who uh, had been through it. You know, they didn't want to see somebody who was broken. This is why I have trust issues. <laughs> um, and when I built myself back up again, I didn't have all of those values, but I still have those voices in my head. The way that you're building up this life based on a spiritual a heart-centered business, a spiritual sharing of information, a walking a spiritual path in which I'm trying to build up a life that I can support myself with and I get it in my head, you know, this this is folly, you failing, you're not earning X amount of money a year, you don't have a 9-to-5 job and I know I don't want any of that it would kill me, to be honest with you. I just, I think it would make me even more depressed. I think it would trigger my depression in waves. And every, every day I, I, I still feel it. And there are still people in my life that will judge me uh, for trying to carve a path for myself that I want rather than what the world at large tells me I should be doing. And I still have those voices from people that, you know, this isn't how you're supposed to live, this isn't a job you can live off, this isn't enough money, this isn't enough... And so the battle is cutting all that out and carrying on what you're doing even when uh, you are suffering. And I'm not talking about voices in your head like crazy voices in your head because I can just hear it now. That You know, you can hear the bitching now. Um, I'm talking about the memory of, of people who have uh, conditioned you and influenced your life. And while we're on that subject, I will address the idea of dark goddesses being evil and this being tied to the idea that they're evil and they cause depression and they, they're some, you know, like they're predatory on those that are depressed uh, or some nonsense. The, con the concept of good and evil is a human concept uh, and how we define good and evil is a human concept and there are many actions, many behaviours uh, that we could really take a good hard long look at and sort of question as to what we consider to be evil and what evil really is because I think the term evil gets bandied around too much. I think people are capable of great evil. Uh, the, the abuses and horrors and atrocities that some people commit against other human beings and animals and other life forms and the planet are evil. Um, I think the behaviour of that guy whose name I can't remember and I don't really care to name him anyway, who bought the AIDS drug and inflated it by whatever ridiculous percent it was like from thirteen dollars to like thousands it was like ridiculous i think that's an act of evil i think that is a parasitic act of evil of somebody who is looking to gain material wealth from the suffering and death of people who desperately need those drugs i think that is an act of pure evil you know, the people that um, abuse animals and abuse human beings, I, th you know, I'm a survivor of sexual abuse. I think people who engage in that sort of thing can be evil. Um, there is a different line of thought with sexual predators that there is a deep sickness within them. And some 
because I've studied it in psychology as well. Some seek out uh, real treatment, like the uh, electric ring around the uh, male genitalia method of trying to recondition themselves. And I don't think, you know, if, if you're seeking that out, you, you really want to stop. But there are certain individuals who engage in that sort of behavior and they show no, you know, psychopathic and, and show no remorse and have no remorse and have no empathy. And these are acts of evil. And human beings are quite obsessed with the notion of good and evil. And you can tell this from the great sort of intrigue that comes around like serial killers and things of that nature that people are obsessed with knowing the details and the information and hearing the stories and you can even tell it to you know the fact that uh, crime TV shows are so popular uh, surrounding the idea of it because people want to understand it they want to categorize it they want to feel safer about it they want to sort of feel that they are better within themselves because they can put a judgment on that sort of evil behavior and move away from it. Uh, I think the idea that goddesses and gods are evil is human beings trying to reflect a human condition onto gods and goddesses, uh, usually to the detriment of somebody else's god or goddess. Trying to instill fear in somebody else's god or goddess by calling them and labeling them evil or because they have their own agenda. The goddess Morrigan is not evil. Uh, she won't take your crap, she won't put up with it, she's a very strong female deity and as such that all the evil labels came through with the advent of Christianity where they tried to demonize all the Celtic gods into faith, they tried to make them evil and tricksters and uh, make people afraid of the old ways as the Celtic myths sort of got uh, translated into more Christocentric mythos back in history. There is some debate as to whether or not Morgana Le Fay in the Arthurian mythos is a remnant of Morrigan mythos through the Celtic uh, belief system and a lot of the Arthurian myths match up to ideas uh, within the Celtic mythos and you can see similarities across many of the myths. Uh, there's similarities between Bran the Blessed and his, his cauldron of magic and, and the Holy Grail and uh, the Fisher King and so on and so forth and there is debate as to whether or not the Morrigan uh, came through into Morgana Le Fay mythos and that's up for debate and argument so that's up to you know people to decide uh, but however there are two uh, strands of Arthurian myth the most well known one is the one that we've all kind of internalized today which is with Morgana Le Fay being uh, the incestual sister and birthing Mordred and killing Arthur and all the rest of it. And then there's another less well-known mythos where she's not, she's a healer and um, a sorceress and the evil stuff is, is not in there but uh, sensationalism always wins even in mythos so there you go. Dark goddesses don't cause depression either. Um, I think the idea along that with depression is do the trials of dark goddesses sort of, you know, infuse people with a depressed state of mind? I think, to be honest with you, the gods and goddesses know far better what they're doing than what we know what we're doing. And I don't think they would be pushing and testing those who they didn't think had the strength to overcome those trials. And they quickly move away from those when they have tried and tested some uh, that they find them dishonorable or they don't think that uh, the energy is, is right between a certain person and a certain goddess anymore and I just I, I don't 
apart from that, apart from thinking that maybe all the, the you know the trials and the hard times will make people more depressed, uh, I can't see how else that idea would come about. I have had an incredible amount of support from Mama Morgan. In my darkest hours, she's been one of the only reasons I've made it through. And she will test me and she will put me through the ringer and she will make me fight for the things that are worth fighting for. And that's her big, her big deal, if you like. If you're not going to fight for it, it's not worth fighting for. Are you going to fight for it? Are you going to stand up and be counted? Are you going to make your voice heard? Are you going to tell the truth to the world and the people that matter? Are you going to tell them? If it's not worth fighting for, then let it go. But don't you dare hide. Don't you dare make excuses. You put it all on the line and you fight for it. Or well, you don't deserve it. You push. You fight. You bleed. You fall down. You get up again. Is that everything? <laughs> for now. Okay. <laughs> I think, as well, there is an incredible stigma around the idea of mental disorder. I've seen it a lot recently, I don't like it. And it's this idea that somehow people are weaker, or there's something very wrong with people, and people get judged and looked down on for suffering from mental disabilities. Some people with mental disabilities are going to be the strongest people you have ever met. Because they fight battles you know nothing about. Battles you can't see. And they win. They don't win every single day. But they win. And they create lives. And they go to work. and Or stay home and work in my case. And they, they do all sorts of things with their lives. We've got celebrities that have... Uh, you know, who go out there in the world of the mass media and, and get through it. We've got spiritual leaders who suffer from mental disorders and they keep going and they keep pushing and they keep creating and they keep inspiring and doing the best that they can do and sharing the path that they're on. They're not weak. I'm not weak. They're not weak. And just because you don't understand something doesn't give me the right to use it to put people down, to judge people, to insult people, to further your own agenda, to whatever. It's just ignorance and hate. So do I think that Dark Goddesses, particularly the Mama Morrigan, obviously cause depression? No. I think it's just a condition of the human mind. Uh, it's just a condition some of us have to deal with, have to work through, have to fight through. I definitely don't think Dark Goddesses and Gods are evil. I think human beings are capable of it. But I think we have to be really careful about the ideas of good and evil. Uh, I don't like it uh, to the, to, for the most part. I think that it's bandied about freely 
and people are, you know, people are called evil and, I mean, for, for the sake of it, my mother called me evil for standing up to her boyfriend, I think, because, you know, in my mother's mind, men come first. And I'm a stalwart feminist. I believe that men and women are equal and I don't believe in this whole subservient to a man thing, sorry. Um, and because I wouldn't lie down, because I wouldn't do as I was told, because I wouldn't obey, I was labelled as evil by my own mother. And the damage stuff like that does is is terrible. People start questioning if there's something wrong with them, you know, why they're in parent or why this person or why that person just didn't love them for who they were. And that's how I feel when it comes to loving my goddess, is I just love her for who she is. And she, she loves me for who I am. Flawed, foolish little human sometimes. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the knowledge that I am deeply flawed, but at least I'm trying. I'm okay with the idea that I get things wrong as long as I keep trying. I'm okay with the idea that I have depression as long as I keep fighting. I'm okay with the idea that some days I won't beat depression as long as I get up the next day. And I think we'll round it off with the idea that sometimes all we have is those that love us, who really love us, for who we are on every single level. In people it's incredibly rare. Goddesses can love us for who we are, even in our worst moments, as long as we seek to be the best version of ourselves, to improve. Depression is nothing to be ashamed of. It's a fact of life. It's a, a medical condition. It's something that there are many different ways of dealing with. Some people choose to go on medication. I personally have not and never will because I... I basically know how it works and I don't want to be so... Uh, without emotion. I think it would cripple me as a witch, to be perfectly honest. As well as a human being. So I accept the bad days. It's not a judgement on people who do decide to go for medication, some people require it to get through and whatever you need to do is what you need to do. But that's just my personal experience with that side of things. I think for those who suffer with depression and couldn't stand through of the testing and trials of a goddess such as the Morrigan, I don't think Mama Morrigan is going to really speak or come or connect or challenge you because she's not going to challenge you knowing that you're going to fail and fall to bits and, and be a puddle on the floor and uh, what what would be the point really? Um, you open yourself up to spirituality in the universe and you receive the help you need whether you want that type of help or not. And 
Morrigan is more selective than to pick people who would be harmed by a connection to her. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. I know it's late. Uh, I've been trying to plan and like I said it's just had to come from the heart and I hope it helped. Many blessings.